I have to warn you now. There will be spoilers ahead. My, My micro, micro mechanism, mechanism thanks you. Thanks you. My, My computer, computer tapes, tapes thank you. And, and I thank you. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger. Hello and welcome to the Fanatics of Film. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Happy holidays to you all. The reason this show is so groundbreaking in the year 2019 is because it's because it isn't ashamed of outlining and highlighting a traditional family, allowing family values to poke through the incredible tough shield that is hell-bent on stopping the protrusion of such values. This new story opens up in a completely new star system, a completely different galaxy on Christmas Day, unashamed of, of Christmas. While reading from Penny's memoir, the warmth of family closeness, dependence, and reliance, and love permeates the room, and my thoughts, describing the emptiness of space and fear of the emptiness, she ends with the discovery of the invisible force of her family, reminding her that she never is really alone. This is absolutely, absolutely priceless and heartwarming. I could barely contain myself as this scene managed to make me miss my own family more than ever with a longing so thick that I could taste it. Reintroduced to the na nature of survival on this planet, they plug a hole in the green in the greenhouse. Methane gas is apparently very prom prominent in the air. They have the fuel for, for the air, but no way to use it. Father and son have a good moment to father allowing his son to uh, become more comfortable with driving, like becoming more acquainted with a horse that you are driving. Dr. Smith, played by Parker Posey, is always entertaining and completely determined to earn or win their respect back in some way, although no one in this entire party trusts her at all. Maureen and John discuss what they must be doing to get moving, and they they are torn with the possibilities that lie in front of them. Maureen is poised for movement, for a chance to give her family what she has, the choice to actually create a family of their own in this future. So she's really, really hell-bent on creating a future for her own kids, and that is admirable in and of itself there. John struggles with another breach in the greenhouse as the atmosphere as the atmosphere kills all their growing sustenance. As John realizes that this tragedy has perhaps revealed itself as a blessing in disguise, he decides to agree with Maureen in her fastidiousness and continuous desire to get moving. As they have been a family and a crew of a spaceship, they are now reigniting adventure in their future, uh, preparing to turn the ship into a raft, braving the rapids, and going up against the possibilities of crashing and sinking because winds might change soon, heightening the possibility of crashing into the rocks. This whole sequence was quite fun, seeing them sail to rock and roll in the ocean. Dr. Smith earns a tiny bit of respect from Penny after helping her with being seasick. Maureen scolds her for being for even talking to Dr. Dr. Smith in the first place. So here's that build of the threat of temptation and you know the the incursion, the 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 infiltration into the fa into the family. After hitting the rocks without opening a hole in the hull, they realize that they are they are marooned for some time and they are forced with also ro rolling into a monsoon that might be on its way. Surprised and fooled, Will sees underwater fire some underwater fireflies and looks and look that looked like his best friend the alien robot and this really does reach out because um i mean it does i mean there's it's a, it's a great exposition because you think you think that that's what's happening you think that he you know he's that the robot's underwater there right there they conducted a short rocket boost to get free of the rocks and went, and they are well on their way faced with a treacherous night's nighttime thunderstorm john is able to save his son from falling into the water dr smith is allowed out of her cage manages to increase the speed by raising the sails and they are headed straight into the ravine of rocks will must step up and do his part by crashing the chariot into the side of the ship pulling the side of the ship above the rocks 
on one side. This is a magnificent display as we are showered with the reward of teamwork. Once again, that's what this show is about. It's about teamwork. It's about family building. It is about family, but more importantly, the friendship within that family and then the bond that, that, is, that exists there and then that bond growing. Dr. Smith is a grifter, a hustler, someone who is pretty brilliant, and she is able to adapt to almost every situation, and she reveals to Maureen that she, or that she was the reason that they were able to leave, you know, she, so subtly, and what if I was the one? It was actually, actually re really wonderfully executed there, and that she had caused all of the turmoil to get them moving. Although they are enemies, she exclaims that she was able to be the monster, and Maureen didn't have to. And uh, faced with a, with, uh, with a man or alien-made structure in the middle of the ocean, we see how bizarre everything is when they are on this, the ocean of an alien planet. It's the, the big ring, the, the, the electrified uh, lightning ring. A family that is forced to face disaster together builds character in the individuals and the friendship and dependency that they have for each other in constantly being challenged as Maureen and Penny fall down into the alien structure. This entire episode is reminiscent of MacGyver as the entire family is faced with constant problem solving, survival skills, and being challenged by the possibility of death, having to somehow propel themselves out of the situation and into another. Faced with their main enemy, the poisonous numbing kelp, the family continues to fight and push. Maureen is exposed for not reading her daughter's first volume, and Dr. Smith reveals the truth that Don West is a smuggler, exposing him and blackmailing him. So there's a lot of a lot of blackmailing and espionage in this season. It seems to me like there's more of it in this season because there are more uh, random characters. Well, I don't know. It feels like it. I could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. Once again, the reward of teamwork floods the screen and envelopes are now a semi-accomplished family as they get the chariot into the vertical plane as the lightning approaches getting closer and closer. Saved by the housing of the chariot, Maureen and Penny remain safe while attacked by lightning in a chariot is attached to a ship by a cable. Dr. Smith continues to eat away at Penny's insecurities, coaxing her to feel more established and fluff up her ego to combat her family along the way. Earlier, Dr. Smith had been explicit in making sure that she only needed one of the family members to accomplish her plan. This is her plan. This moment illustrates how she has been chosen. The Resolute is revealed, their audio signature, the sonic watermark that they uh, can be identified with. Continuing on with, with episode three, Dr. Smith, a chaos creator, manages to start a fire and that triggers many doors to open and close all over the station, creating an eruption of confusion throughout the station. We are slowly learning her background as her story is being revealed to us in a flashback where we see, we see small memories and moments of her previous life before she decided to bask in a life of crime, surrendering herself to temptation of domination of her victims ele while elevating herself. And so that's kind of where she kind of ended up. Samantha's character reminds me of Newt from Aliens as they crawl through smaller corridors and, and ducks. The build of danger is slow and brooding, building and building with anticipation. In the aliens' reminiscent steam tunnels, Samantha explains that she really misses her family and she is a survivor, a survivor who knows how to remain one, for she has learned. As they re realize that there is a horse in the dining hall, I am blown away that they have all allowed themselves to be separated like this, becoming a vulnerable, divided group, exposing their weaknesses. Uh, again, more uh, grifting and ident identity theft floods the life of Dr. Smith as she tortures her sister, floating into her own destructive mentality as an established con person. As she steals DNA samples from someone in cryosleep, she tortures herself by watching old files of her criminal activity while deleting it. So it's it's like she's kind of addicted to seeing it. It's something like that something that someone deranged would have to see. She, it's like she has to watch or her own bad deeds, or it's, maybe she's tempted or something. But anyway, it's kind of interesting how she's she's completely 
engulfed by her own curiosity about it at least it seems like maybe she's just more curious about it and wants to rewatch him it's weird and it's very interesting and she's very compelling as a character she turned out to be my one of my fa- most favorite parts of this season the contentedness of a fun science fiction space adventure story envelops me as i watch this family defend itself and run from it and outsmart it into a trap on this space station while john whisper yells the lyrics to a steve miller band song with the arrival of a new military force i can't help but be suspicious and it's really weird there maybe you could help me out if anyone if you're in the chat please you know, leave them. I love, I love to hear comments because I do want to talk about this. So episode four opens up, and this episode reminds me of Robotech because here we are. Here is where we learn about how the technology that has been achieved thus far in the Earth timeline and what our own technology was elevated by an initial contact that had been kept for, hidden for many years. The initial crash landing of the alien ship had paved a way for new technology, although humans were unable to comprehend its abilities and or possibilities due to the distance of the evolution of such technology. So this leads me to believe that only some of the technology was discovered or re- recreated or or recreated and therefore only some of it understood because they built the resolute around the wrecked ship. Finally, this leads me to believe that is why they keep getting attacked because this species of robot simply wants their SU- SUV back. <laughs> In this opening scene, we learn uh, just how vital the robots are to the ship's functionality. So now the increased need to recover the robot or any of the alien robots has been established among more than just Will. Will is excited and honorable, recognizing in moments that if he is able to communicate with the robots in some effective way, that he needs to step up when capable. He has been taught well by his family, and more particularly, his father continues to be a a good influence, setting a good example. Don West is an is an an entertaining character, uh, constantly entertaining, and his the the you fall in love with his character because he becomes a hero too. Everybody has a hero arc in this show. Everyone in this show has a hero arc, and that's what makes it so great. Don West is an entertaining character trying to win support from any group of people. Again, and il- as illustrated well, we continue to see all the possible threats that might present themselves on an alien world. When we see a spore of some kind rustling away at the axle of the chariot vehicle, Will is completely determined to discover and communicate with the alien robots but he is unaware of their actual value to the colonists. So it's a very different um, uh, different motivation there. This shows sheer passion for friendship, which is fun to recognize. It always is interesting to know what is in the heads of these characters, but you can see the very differences there and it's, it's, it's very well outlined. Reacting to the problems with the well, with the well rigging, John Robinson passes by more rust-infesting spores without noticing them, continuing further down to discover the problem. They are faced with constant challenges to overcome. This show is about not giving up. That's what this show is about. Never give up. Never give up. (laughs) Because your survival depends on it. Never give up. Because your survival depends on it. Will continues to bury his way into the eat into the ET-like plastic shielding sector, only wanting to find the alien. He just wants to communicate with it. He is propelled by absolute necessity. He simply cannot stop himself from exploring and finding the answer or an answer of some kind. Dr. Smith continues to pursue a friendship with Penny by highlighting their similarities. It took me a, a, li- a little bit to decide if Parker Posey is a good villain, and I am realizing that now, that she is actually a great villain because she is elusive, someone who is difficult to read because she is unpredictable. She can get under your skin, but only if you allow her subtle charm to infiltrate an attack. She is constantly changing, adapting, mutating her disposition, making so many different versions of herself. 
that it is almost impossible for anyone to read her, except for some, maybe. 